And so we're heading toward the Ossington neighborhood, which has changed a lot over the years. It traditionally had a lot of Vietnamese immigrants and businesses. And this restaurant we're going to right now, Golden Turtle, has been there for almost three decades in its current location. Golden Turtle is known for having a really excellent bowl of beef pho. And I can't wait to try the food there. You said this was the first pho restaurant? The first one, it's the first owner. The first owner yeah. opened on 1978. But how did you get involved? Well, I work up for the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he's sick, he told me uh, when he died, mm -hmm. I take the old one for the restaurant and keep the good total sort of forever. So you have to keep this restaurant forever? Yeah, for me and for my kids too. So you must have really grown up in the restaurant. I mean. Most of the restaurant wait staff is family, either my cousin, myself, my brother, my mom and dad. And then the kitchen staff is usually my, my aunts and my uncles that are in there. We also have a restaurant in, in Vietnam. Oh, you do? Yes. yes. What's, it, what's it called? The Golden, same Golden, Golden Turtle. Turtle. <laughs> There's meaning to the name. Yeah, so the Golden Turtle story origin is actually an actual true story. We used to have kings and queens in Vietnam. The king was fighting for a war and he accidentally dropped his sword in the water, but it landed on the turtle's back and the turtle's back is yellow in color. And as the turtle was rising, he was able to capture his sword back and won a war in Vietnam. On the picture of our front menu, there's the little house. That's where the golden turtle reside and that's where it passed away. Did the recipes come from the, the original owner? So the first recipe, yes, was from the original owner before we were just strictly making the stock out of beef and chicken bones and then we had to add sugar and salt. But now the sea cucumbers that we use in our broth right. now can be imported and used. And these are these items that we want to use into our broth because we, it reduces the amount of other ingredients that we right. need to That's use. So yeah. less sugar, less salt, which is, you know, it's great because a lot of our customers now are growing into different sort of allergies or restrictions and we want to be able to accommodate that for them. Look at this feast, fresh spring roll. Just like eating a nice salad. Basil and lettuce, vermicelli noodle shrimp all wrapped in this paper thin rice paper. This is so much better than like a, a deep fried spring roll. I just ordered this because I thought it kind of seemed fun. It's a chicken wrapped around a piece of sugar cane. It's like a chicken meatball. Some of the sweetness of the sugar cane is imparted into the meat. Now this is what we've been waiting for. This is the beef pho with beef and beef tendon that kind of gooey, gelatinous beef tendon. This is a broth made with beef and chicken stock. And then add the vermicelli noodles, the beef, the beef tendon, and then just smother it in herbs. Basil, bean sprouts, green onion, white onion. And small this for the salt. You mix uh, the two salt together, and you cut the meat to dip in the sauce. And dip the meat in the sauce. Yes. Okay. Right. So this is great. I'm really getting step-by-step -step instruction on how to eat this stuff. So I'm going to take a piece of beef out, and he recommended dipping it in this mixture of sriracha and hoisin, which is kind of like Chinese barbecue sauce. It's kind of like a sticky, sweet sauce. We'll eat that. And that's really good. That's like a little bit of a smoky, kind of soybean tomatoey flavor, and then it's got a real kind of heat to it. Let's get into the soup. I love the fresh herbs. I love the onions and the bean sprouts and the basil. So what's nice about this, it would seem a little counterintuitive, right? You live in a hot country and that you'd want to get up and have a hot bowl of beef soup first thing in the morning. The thing is though, it really works. You're eating something that's kind of like your body temperature. You're eating something that sort of matches the temperature around you. It's very light. It's not greasy. It's very filling without, without being heavy at all. This is kind of like an ideal thing to eat during the day. The next step you want to try it. What do I want to do? Yeah, two sauces together in your soup. You oh, you want it. me to put it in the soup? Yes. We've got a little hoisin, a little sriracha. It's going to make this soup a nice murky color. The sweetness sort of enhances the other saltier flavors within the soup, so it sort of acts as a counterbalance. Let's go on to the bowl, a vermicelli bowl. Spring roll comes first, so that goes into the fish sauce, which we've mixed with the chili. 
Fish sauce, if you haven't had it, it is a very fishy, funky, light, sweet tasting sauce. It's a little bit of an acquired taste. If you don't love fish, you might not like it, but it's really good. And I'm gonna pour it now. And then I'm gonna mix up this huge bowl of rice noodle, grilled chicken, shrimp, peanut, pickled carrot, cucumber, lettuce, cilantro. It is like a delicious Vietnamese salad. It's really complete feeling. Vietnamese cuisine is also based on like balance, different flavors, balancing different cultures. It really comes through in the cuisine because you know, you've got this starchy rice noodle base, piece of grilled meat from the land. We've got a piece of meat from the sea and then you've got this fish sauce. You've got this spicy from the chili, and then it's also got a wonderful green salad aspect of the different herbs and vegetables. What else would you need to add to this? You've really covered sort of every base as far as like ticking off your culinary boxes. So to sum up, Vietnamese food, it really is perfect in so many ways. It's all about balance. It's all about being sort of light and fresh. It gives you fuel to get through your day. At the same time, I think Vietnamese cuisine is among the more healthier cuisines. Very basic ingredients from the earth. And yet it has all of the satisfying elements that you want. If you love noodles, there's noodles. And if you love meat, it's there. And if you love fresh herbs, that's there as well. And frequently they're all mixed together. So you're sort of getting everything that you want in one cuisine and frequently in one dish. And so, you know, for that reason, Vietnamese is, is certainly among my favorite types of food. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from Golden Turtle Restaurant in Toronto, Canada. If you'd like to watch more, please click here. Do you like a bird nest? Yeah. Which one? Yes. I made a, I made a sale. <laughs> I get 10% on that one bird's nest. <laughs>